Tube, it's Brittany at Ingleside Imaginarium, and can you believe how quickly this summer has flown by? Well, I suppose it has dragged some weeks, but I still cannot believe that it's already nearing the end of August. Last time I spoke with you all, it was back in the middle of June for my Stitch Mania recap, so it's definitely been a long time. But because it's been such a long time, that means I have some really fun and exciting things to share with you. Most particularly, all of my memories and memorabilia that I was able to get at the New Jersey Floss Tube Retreat. Um, I'll just go ahead and say I had a fantastic time. Thank you to Arlene for putting it together. Last year, I was sitting over here in New York City just across the river feeling the biggest FOMO so I made sure when the waitlist was opened up that I was on the waitlist and then I ended up getting a spot and had just a great time. The first thing that I'm really excited to share with you all is a pretty cool announcement. I was contacted about a month or a month and a half ago by Kate Worthington who owns Lakeside Needlecraft and she told me that she was putting together a winter slash holiday themed cross stitch book. So a collection of, of patterns that are winter holiday themed that designers from all over the world are participating in. Uh, they range from, from big name designers such as Frosted Pumpkin, I believe, is going to be in it. And I I think I just saw announced that Alessandra Adelaide is going to make a pattern for it. Um, so some like pretty well-known people all the way down to smaller designers who only sell off of Etsy like myself. Uh, firstly, I'm very flattered that she contacted me. I know that she stitched my Guardians of Notre Dame pattern and so to be on that list of people that she contacted was pretty exciting. Uh, the other reason, I mean, one of the other reasons that this is also exciting is it's my first time being published uh, by anyone besides myself, but also in a hard copy. So that's pretty cool. I have officially designed and submitted uh, and stitched my model for the pattern that I'm submitting to the book, or that will be featured in the book. And I am not allowed to say what it is yet, however I will say that it is holiday themed, but it is not a traditional uh, or more well-known holiday custom or uh, type of holiday. And it kind of has to do with a, with a fantastical creature, as <laughs> per my patterns usually do. So, um... With that little bit of a tease, I'll leave you, but uh, I would like to say uh, the cool thing about this collection is that she asked us all to stick within a limited color palette. So theoretically, if you were to buy one skein of each of these colors, uh, you would be able to stitch multiple patterns from this book. So I think that's pretty neat that, you know, you have a color palette, you have this book. I think it's going to be definitely over 60 designs if 60 designers are contributing. And you can look through and find, you know, you already have the stuff you need to stitch it. So I thought that was pretty darn cool. Uh, and it is available for pre-order right now. And it will be shipped in November. And she has been announcing all the designers who are involved. So if you go to her Facebook page, Lakeside Needlecraft, uh, or to her Facebook group, New Scroll Through the History, you'll see that uh, she's been announcing all of the designers. So if you're interested, I encourage you to go check that out. I'm going to put the link to the website down here. So if you want to pre-order, you can. I'm getting a copy and I'm really excited to get to see, um, well, <laughs> my pattern in print, but also I'm super excited to be able to see all of the other designs that will be in it. So that's just the first exciting thing that I w uh, was looking forward to sharing with you today. Um, the other exciting things to share uh, is I have a whole stack. Well, it's not, not a big stack, but I have a stack of fully finished objects to share with you. And that is always exciting. I feel like, you know, we celebrate the finishes, but to see a stitched piece finished in a way that, you know, honors the time materials 
spent going into it and the love, you know, I always think is, is pretty darn cool. So I'm excited to share those with you. Um, the first one that I'm going to share is this, <laughs> is this right here. I stitched this uh, with some natural fibers. Um, if you look here, it's got like this really cool stripey variegated effect to it. And um, once you stuff it, it really has a life like uh, <laughs> it really has a life like um, finish to it. I'm just kidding, of course that's Rhaegar, but you guys know that. Mm, just being a little silly. Um, hopefully he doesn't decide to sit on the computer. Where are you gonna go, buddy? Hi. This is, I'd love for now to be petting Rhaegar time. You gotta lay down, buddy. Preferably not on cross-stitch stuff. That's, that's my cross-stitching. Sit on that pillow back there. Sit on Danny's, but no, not there, please. No. Oh. This is a stack of cross stitching to show you guys. I guess it also looks super comfy. Anyway, um, I'll get through my fin fully finished objects and then make him move when it comes time to show you my whips because that's what he's sitting on. Or he's leaving. Never mind, he's going. <laughs> that's a cat for you, huh? Anyway, as I was saying, this is a brand new Ingleside Imaginarium pattern that I actually just released today or perhaps yesterday by the time that this um, goes up. It is the second in my Loretta Seasons series. Uh, my first one was called A Gambling and this one is called A Soaking. So this is the little pillow that I made and finished and this is the design itself a soaking so this is the summer design my sister's dog when she was alive one of her favorite things in the summertime was for my sister katie to fill up a little kitty pool in the yard and loretta would just you know enjoy her time in the water and i know a lot of dogs in the summertime enjoy being able to soak in a pool soak up the rays and soak in a pool so uh, i was able to finish this into a pillow like the first one um, these quilting fabrics were actually <laughs> found at michael's michael's has little like i guess jelly rolls and little stacks of fat eights fat Court, uh, there's a lot like squares that quilters can get. I don't, not charm packs. I don't know what they're called. I'm not a quilter, but they have little packs of uh, quilting fabric. So this is a soaking. It is for sale in my store. There will be an autumn and a winter version to finish out the series, but I think it turned out super cute. I love that this, fa this fabric here, I actually found after I had chosen to use um, this uh, week's on the marigolds in the pattern and on the text. Um, this uses, I believe, six colors of Weeks Dye Works and then one color of DMC. So pretty neat. I'm very pleased with it. I'm going to be able to send this to my sister now that I've shown it to you, even though summer is now over. <laughs> um, so yeah, I think it turned out pretty darn cute. The other, uh, well, the next two objects that I was able to fully finish are in frames. This one, um, ignore the back, I need to put some paper on it. But um, this one is a pattern that I finished right before Stitch Mania. It is Country Cottage Needleworks in the meadow. Um, so obviously with the glass, it's gonna be a glare. But um, yeah, so this design is kind of an odd um, dimensions. It, it finishes up as uh, nine by 10 inches, I think. And of course, nine by 10 inches, unless you get a custom cut frame, it's gonna be very rare that you find uh, frame those dimensions. And so what I ended up doing is I went on Etsy and uh, there is a store called The Rusty Roof and they have um, frames of all different sizes. This one is a 10 by 10. So it is the appropriate size here. Um, 
it felt a little empty on the sides. Originally, this pattern does not have the border on the vertical sides, only on the top and bottom. So when I got the frame, I kind of used the mat board that came with it to see if it would look all right. And I decided um, after counting the stitches that I was gonna add the border in. So let's see if I can get this not to show too much glare. Uh, I think it turned out pretty darn cool. Uh, I think the the second border or the extra two pieces of border really helps. And sorry you can see my computer screen there. Um, yeah, I'm really pleased to finally have this one finished stitching and framed. I'm gonna be able to give it to my grandma now, so that'll be nice. I think this was a 2015 mania start. 2015 or 16, it's either three or four years old. So yeah, it's about time. Anyway, don't mean to blind you with that light. Uh, yeah, pretty cool. I think it looks really nice. I, um, on the pattern, it's shown in a white frame and I think that picks up the white in the pattern really nice. And uh, it's just a little bit distressed. I, I like the wide frame for this piece. So yeah. I'm going to have to wrap that up really well and uh, put it in a box to send to my grandma. This piece is an oldie, but a goodie, and I'm really excited because she's finally been framed like she deserves. Uh, this is my spring dragon. Um, I had originally bought a frame that was a size smaller, and while she did technically fit, uh, you couldn't, you didn't get to see a lot of this beautiful uh, picture of this plus jade fabric. So uh, I went to Michael's and one of the reasons that I finally was inspired to get a frame for her is that you'll see later my summer dragon is very closely, um, is going to be finished very soon. But yes, anyhow, here is spring dragon. I think she looks beautiful. I'm going to have to find a place to hang her in the apartment. It's just a gray stained. It's not really distressed at all. It's more of a just a gray stain on the wood. So you can still see the grain coming through. And I thought that kind of was, you know, like she has the cherry blossoms bait, you know, in there. I thought it kind of was a good like tree bark color, even though it doesn't have a tree bark texture. I, I really like it. Yeah, so I'm pleased with that. The last fully finished object that I want to share with you is actually something that I don't have here to show you, but I did take a video before I gave it away. It was my Smalls Exchange piece for the retreat, and I am really, really excited for you all to see it. I'm going to insert the video clip here. If you have already seen this on my Instagram, feel free to skip ahead, or if you want to look at it again, that's fine too. Um, but yeah. This is my needle keeper. All right, so I've made it to the New Jersey floss tube retreat. Um, it's really exciting to be here with all the stitchers and I am participating in the Smalls Exchange. So I wanted to get a video of my finished Smalls project so that I could share it with you guys. Um, so this is a, I'm going to call it a prototype of a pattern that I'm hoping to release eventually. However, I didn't have time to finish it all the way. So uh, I'll tell you a little bit about uh, what you can expect once the full pattern comes out. So this is a needle book slash scissor fob combo. I'm calling this pattern Needle Keeper. It has a snap here that you undo and open the wings of this dragon. Um, this tail has a clip at the end as well as a little leaf charm that um, hooks onto these scissors. So this is the exchange gift that I'm entering into uh, the exchange tomorrow night, filming this on Friday. Um, and you can see here his wings use felt so that you can stick your needles in them. And then when you're not using them, you can fold him up and he will keep them safe for you. And he'll keep your scissors where you can find them. Um, I told you this is kind of like a prototype. 
Um, my goal eventually would be um, to have a back to him that looks like the back of the dragon. So it would have um, more felt on the other side. Not that you'd want to put needles in that side, but um, that way uh, when he folds his wings up like this, it would look like the dragon's wings on here. Unfortunately, I ran out of time to do that for the exchange, which um, this has cat hair all over it. Fantastic. Whoever gets it is gonna get a present from Danny and Rhaegar as well. Um, <laughs> anyway, uh, I'm kind of disappointed I didn't get to do everything I wanted to for this exchange. However, I'm also kind of glad I'll be restitching it because I'll have one for myself. My goal with this pattern would eventually for it to be a series, I wanna do a bunch of different colors. A little bit about him. You can see here he has a metallic in him. He has a crinic. These are regular Mill Hill seed beads here. These are the Mill Hill Magnifica beads. There's another second color of Krynik in his claws and his horns. Um, you can see more of the beads here. And for those of you that have followed me a while, you'll know that I have a huge water dragon that I'm stitching who um, will eventually have metallics and beads. And this has kind of been uh, a sneak preview of what that will hopefully eventually have as well with the beads um, as kind of little strategic scale marks. This uh, gorgeous felt here is from Lady Dot Creates or Lady Dot Creations, and it is it was the perfect color. I had put these um, this color scheme together out of stuff that I already had, so I wouldn't have to wait to start stitching it once I uh, decided this was what I was going to do for the smallest exchange. And um, I luckily went on to her Etsy store, and she had this just gorgeous golden color felt, and uh, you can see it has the um, chevron kind of shape to it and I uh, strategically cut it so that it looks like the arrows are pointing down here on the wings and obviously I would have a finishing guide as well that came with the pattern and this one might have to be um, I suppose you could find this charm I found in New York City and either I would have to make it a, a like a thread pack or, you know, I would have to put the charm in with the pattern, like a printed copy of the pattern, or I guess people could go and find their own as well. But yeah, I'm very pleased with him and I hope whoever receives him will love him um, and that he will guard their needles. I'm sure he will do a good job. He's got, I think it's eight needles in his wings right now. And then these scissors are pretty cool. I found them on Amazon um, and I thought they would go well with this because they have snakes and scales. But anyhow, I'm going to wrap him up and try and get as much cat hair off of him as possible. I didn't notice there was so much until this video. Um, and he'll be wrapped up so he can be given away tomorrow. How exciting. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna head back down and get back to stitching with people. Talk to you later, bye. So that was Needle Keeper. Uh, you'll probably be seeing him again or somebody similar to him, very similar to him again, because I do have to restitch uh, the what will be the actual model for it. Um, I haven't been able to start it yet, but uh, he didn't actually take too long to stitch up. So I'll have to multiply that time by two because there will be a front and a back, but um, I'm sure I'll be back to show you guys when I'm able to finish that model stitch and release the pattern. I'm really excited about it. Uh, sometimes as a creator, and I'm sure with you guys too, with, with some of your patterns as they just come up, you know, as they, they work out or at, when you finish a pattern and you have to fully finish it in a certain way, you know, you kind of surprise yourself sometimes with how, how neat a thing is or, or just how pleased you are with it. So yeah, I was very excited to share that with you guys. And I'm pleased to say that my swap partner, um, that, well, this is how I wrapped it up. I wanted to make sure that whomever picked it off of the table where all the swap pieces were, I wanted to make sure that they liked dragons uh, because if you open that and you weren't really a big dragon fan I think you would still think it was neat but you would you know 
I feel like someone who really enjoys dragons would, would uh, appreciate it. So the person, uh, her name was Sharon, who picked my gift, really liked it. And uh, he was, I think, appreciated by everyone. Uh, we got to all return our small pieces that we received to the table back where they were wrapped so that we could all take a look and appreciate them all. And uh, a lot of people were very, very excited about him. So. I will be back, I'm sure, when he's uh, when the pattern's ready to be released, but it might be a little longer. The next thing that I'm going to show you are two, well, one actual finish and one mini finish. The actual finish that I have here is my Harry Potter pattern that I was stitching. It's called Happiness, and I am terrible and I forgot to write down the designer but i will put it down here um, so that if you're interested in stitching this project you can find it it was on etsy um, this is stitched on a 32 count in picture this plus phantom and i think that this is beautiful i think the fabric is perfect i love those orangey yellows um, it says happiness can be found even in the darkest of times if one only remembers to turn on the light and this is the only project that I did not, I, I wanted to have this fully finished to show you, but I did not have time to do this one yet. Um, I still intend to give it to the person that I was going to give it to, uh, but I do need to finish it first. But it looks pretty cool. I think the fabric choice was, was pretty spot on, <laughs> if I do say so myself. I think Kim was there, actually. Spartan Stitcher was there to help me pick that out. I, I got this fabric at Reflections. So Julie and Kim were there. And uh, see, it turned out really well. So that one's finished. It was exciting to be, I mean, it's always exciting to be able to cross a whip off your list. Um, next, a uh, mini finish. And I don't have to hide anything. Um, well, I have actually quite a few things to show you on this because it's been so long since I spoke with you. This is the uh, War of Tooth and Claw. This is the 2019 Ingleside Imaginarium Mystery Stitch Along. And um, there are a few monarchs here that you have not seen. The last monarch you, see, you saw was the Kraken Monarch as well as the seahorse monarch and they have been joined at this point by four more combatants including the trout or fish monarch down here he represents the tully family in the game of thrones series um because the trout is kind of boring uh, animal to have represent your family um, or if you were not a fan of the show the Tullys are a pretty important family in the books and in the show however if you're not a fan of the show it's kind of a, a boring one to have in your project so as an alternative I uh, stitched and designed the unicorn so you could pick either of those to stitch for this for that month when they came out and technically there is a family with the unicorn as a sigil in Westeros. I can't remember them, but the sigil, well, their house colors are, I think, purple, which was not in my color scheme originally. So um, I tried when I had an alternate to, um, in order to keep the balance of the pattern correct, I tried to um, stick with the same colors as the first one. Uh, so there's the trout, there's the unicorn, there is down here at the bottom of the crown, the viper or snake monarch, and he's actually wound around a spear, which is through that bronze crown there. Um, the spear is in gold krynic, and that represents the Dornish uh, kingdom or the Dornish region, um, Dorn, they're called, as well as Oberon Martell, um, because he technically the sigil for the for Dorn was a spear and sun, whereas uh, Oberon, who was from Dorn, um, and arguably the most likable member of the F family, uh, was called the Viper. So I wanted to include the snake.
in the pattern. And then also the nod to the uh, mar the Dorn slash the Martells uh, with the spear. The last new monarch on my piece here is, of course, the lion representing the Lannister family. And um, just because I think that I had tried to be a little coy, I guess, with uh, calling these sigils out to match the show and the books, I'll just go around. This is the Baratheon stag. This is the Aaron falcon. This is the Greyjoy kraken. And then the seahorse, there might be a family with a seahorse sigil, but um, I can't remember it off the top of my head. Anyhow, here is the Lannister lion. So I'm very pleased with how this is stitching up. There are two more monarchs to do. One in the east, one in the north. I'll have you guess who's going where. <laughs> uh, so it's going to be really exciting to see this one done in only two more months. So that's going to be awesome. And then I'll be able to focus on stitching next year's. Technically, I have already started. And the people at New Jersey Flosstube Retreat, some of them got a sneak peek at it. And I'm actually really, really excited about this one. I'm getting a head start. I'm trying to get an early start since last year. I just ran out of time and inspiration. I was having trouble thinking of a good idea, but I'm very excited about this one. So those were my finishes. I'm going to go into the whips that I have to show you. Um, a couple of these, or at least one of these is a new start, and it's actually all wrinkled up because Rhaegar and I both sat on it, I think. Um... This was a stitch along that I joined, started by Amy Baruch, and it is Kismet on, it is Kismet Stitches on Instagram, uh, Diana and Amy, I believe, the Magical Moth Sal, and uh, the piece featured in that is HL's Moth by Kathy Barrick. I told you all about this in one of my previous videos after market. Um, I got this piece from Kathy Barrick at market and I got to see this pin cushion slash necklace uh, stitched up in person and I decided that I wanted one. So I'm going to be stitching this slash I am stitching this on 40 count hand dyed one over one. Yeah, it's no joke. Um, this is the fabric I'm using. It is a piece of picture this plus uh, oaken. A really nice piece of fabric. I'm glad that the piece is going to be so small because that means that I can use the rest of it for something else. But down here in the corner, super small, is my start. And you can actually see it pretty well there on camera. I have the body of the moth and I think the majority of the lower part of the wing on this side done. These are some tiny stitches, y'all. I think the this I got done in the first, I think we started June 1st, and this tiny bit is what I got done in the first two or three weeks, and I haven't actually stitched on it since then. I've had some deadline pieces, including uh, the swap piece that I needed to make for the retreat, and of course my stitch along piece. There's just been some things that I needed to get done. And to be quite honest, this is not really leisure stitching. It is very challenging to see. And um, you know, you just have to look very hard. I need to get a magnifier. So far I've done this without a magnifier. So uh, that might be something to invest in. Great lighting, but not no magnification. Um, the next whip that I'm going to show you is my summer dragon. This is what he will look like when he's finished. And this is where he's at now. I'm very, very close to finishing him, or at least it feels very close. I have one more shade of green to do. I have two shades of a tan color. 
and then a little bit of black and his eye is a bright blue and then the back stitching which it is pretty back stitch heavy i believe it's i think the whole thing is back stitched um so all around his body around each of his fins around his claws around his you know just i believe it's it's pretty heavily back stitched so um saying all that sure it doesn't maybe seem like I'm very close but it just it feels close I think because all of these spaces that I have left to fill in are small little sections you know there's not any big expanses um, so that's pretty exciting and once I get to finish him then I'll be able to start autumn dragon and she's really cute and she's very colorful so that one will be fun He's kind of up on my list for a focus piece. I would love to get him finished. Next is my water dragon. Sad to say there's not a whole bunch more progress on this. Um, really it's more like backwards progress. This is my water dragon for those of you who need a reminder. And I had him out at retreat and was showing him off. and discussing the fact that I had to frog his tail fin out. So I've been focusing on frogging out the thread that I need to remove. Uh, there is still this part of the tail left. There is the webbing on his toes and fingers. And then the gills up here I still need to remove and replace with the Weeks dye works that I'm going to be using instead. Um, in order to be uh, motivated to frog this, I allowed myself, once I frogged a section here, I could stitch a little section of the fins on the other side of the tail. So you can see, um, if you saw it at retreat, slash if you saw it in one of my former videos, I had, I think, up until about this section here, all stitched with the old thread. And so I've been able to frog think all of this and I still have this bit to go but once I get that frogged it's gonna uh, I think I'll have more motivation to work on this because I won't have that to um, dread <laughs> coming to when working on this project uh, but yeah still looking at it right now that's a lot of stitching that tail especially to, to take out um, but there shouldn't be any backwards progress after that. So that's my water dragon. The next whip I'm going to show you, I'm just going, this isn't in order of any way I worked on it or anything, but um, this is my, I had started two Pokemon in Stitch Mania, and just this week I was looking at some projects I'd like to start and some designs I'd like to start model stitching for, uh, that kind of thing, and I was thinking to myself it would be really great to get some of my whips crossed off my, lip, my list. So I thought about which ones would get done very quickly, and two of those were the Pokemon that I started back in Stitch Mania. This is Nido King over here, this is Pikachu, and as you can see, since Stitch Mania, I was able to finish the first color on them both, which is black. The black outline. I think Nido King only had his ear done at Stitch Mania and Pikachu just had I think the top of his head and his face because it was very silly. And I have gotten the first two colors actually done on both of them. That means this darker purple for Nido King and the rusty red color on Pikachu. And I have started on the third color for Nido King which is a light purple. So here is Nido King, he's pretty, he's got a lot of stitches. He's a bulky Pokemon in the game and in stitching. And then here is the cute little Pikachu. So I just love the way that video game sprites turn out as cross stitching. They're just, they translate so well because obviously pixels equal stitches. So these are turning out really well and I think I should be able to get them done pretty quickly. My friend, who these are for, her birthday is in September, so it would be perfect timing to get them done and framed and sent to her for her birthday. That's going to be my goal. 
and I think it should definitely be uh, possible. Uh, this next piece is another one of my Stitch Mania pieces I was able to get a little more work on. This is my Barnyard Quilts piece. Let me show you what it's going to look like. It is this top piece, Ducks and Quilts, from this booklet, Barnyard Quilts by Country Cross Stitch. Um, I'm doing the ducks. This was a project started by my mom before I was born that I am finishing. And I believe for Stitch Mania, I was able to finish the blue border on the this quilt over here. And I think maybe I also stitched the last... No, I can't remember. Sorry. Um, but I did look back on my video to see where I was at, and I remember seeing this full blue border. And then the last time I worked on this, I was able to start getting the colors on the log cabin quilt done. And it makes me laugh right now because it says Fifi. And I used to have a cat named Fierro. He was a boy, but we called him Fifi because Fierro. Fifi's short for Fierro. And so when I see this, I actually think of him. He was a grumpy boy and he still lives with my sister. She sends us videos of him and he's just a grumpy old man now. <laughs> This last piece that I have progress on to show you, it, um, it is from this book, Carousel Horses and Cross Stitch. This is my Haunted October Nights horse. You can see here is what it will look like when it's finished, and I would like to point out to you, um, this cat, these bats, and there is a black checkerboard effect within the border on the top and the bottom. So I want you to look at that. Oh, and this little spider. So remember that and then look at my piece. This is my haunted October nights. It is on a piece of Lazy River Jobelin Evenweave in 28 count. And you can see here, I have everything except the cat, the bats, the spider, and the checkerboard pattern in the border. I am so darn close to getting a finish on this. I will say I have to stitch that and then I have an entire, uh, well, I don't wanna say anything crude, but I have a lot of back stitching to do. I believe nearly every thing you can outline on this is outlined all in different colors. It's going to look really neat when it's done just because everything's going to get that crisp, um, you know, that back stitching is just going to make every, all of the shapes really pop, but it'll be a lot of work. It would be really cool if I could get this done by Halloween. We'll see. We'll see. For me, it's always hard just motivation-wise to pick. Do I work on one of my own designs and get some progress done on, on the model stitch or in designing or in whatever, or do I work on some of my own personal projects and try and get some done? Especially ones that aren't gifts. But having that one finished in time for Halloween would be pretty darn cool. And I'm pretty sure it would be done before Jessie's Raven Queen. I don't think she's finished that. And I know that you have your priority pieces. So there's, of course, no pressure, but <laughs> I'm kidding, I'm kidding. I feel like probably uh, other people have started pieces for that Sal. It was the Welcome Home, the Raven Queen, or Bringing Home the, the Raven Queen. Uh, stitch along back when Raven Queen came out and Jessie Marie was making up this whole uh, She was stitching a few projects in preparation for the Raven Queen So she was like stitching her haunted house and getting the haunted house ready for the Raven Queen to move in and she I forget what else she was saying about but she had this whole thing and I didn't want to stitch the Raven Queen But I wanted it on the Sal action. So my thought was Every queen needs a noble steed, and so my Halloween horse is going to be uh, the Raven Queen's mount. So that's when I started it. I think of her whenever I work on this. Um, so, yeah, that's pretty darn exciting. It's going to be really awesome to have that one done. 
And then I guess I'll have to start thinking about which horse will be next. Because I would like to stitch them all eventually. So that's everything that I made any significant progress on uh, to, that I needed to show you all. Uh, now I'm going to move on to the retreat. And first of all, I just would like to thank Arlene Cohen. Uh, she designs works by AB ABC. And uh, she put the New Jersey retreat together. She hosted the first one last year, uh, put everything together, organized it, and ran it. And uh, she did the same this year. And um, yeah, I'm just so, so grateful because I had a wonderful time. I'm hoping she does it again next year because I would like to be there again. I got to meet so many people that I feel like I have known for the last five years but have not seen in person. I got to, to meet the crafty curator, Letitia, and I got to meet Jesse Marie or Jesse the, for the first time. And we have been messaging and there have been days where uh, I drive down through Virginia on my way to uh, Nashville when I drive through. And so there were a couple days where I was like, is it possible that I can run into you if it works along my journey and if you're in this part and it hadn't worked out but I got to see her and meet her for the first time and it just you know it just feels normal another person I got to meet who I have been friends with for a while uh, is Kelly Bell from Kelly Bell. I think she's just Kelly Bell on YouTube but she used to be called Kelly Bell Stitches. She is uh, well I always think of her as a friend first but I know that she is one of my like biggest supporters for my design work and she uh, is so she brought for the brag table we, we had tables nearly around the entire room I feel like we could have filled up all around the conference room but uh, she had brought her Guardians of Notre Dame framed and when she stitched it she used all kinds of metallics and beads and to see it in person, to see it glitter, it felt like looking at real stained glass. So it was really wonderful to meet her, and I should say, I know that she'll be watching this. It was so great to meet you, Kelly, and um, I'm hoping it won't be the last time, and I'm hoping you're having a fun time in Disney if you're still there, although I think you might be home by this point. Um, anyhow, I got to, yeah, I just got to meet so many people, and I got to not re-meet, but I got to see a lot of people again. I got to see Diana again. Oh, uh, people I got to meet. I got to meet uh, Abby uh, Top Knot Stitcher, and I got to meet uh, Michelle Bendy for the first time. She was there, and then I got to see McKenna again and Emily again, and I got to uh, see Diana again and um, Stephanie Miss Oso Crafty and Sammy Joe and uh, just some some people I had met previously at the original floss tube retreat that was held in Austin and it just it was fellowship you know and it just filled my heart and I um, got to meet up with some New York City stitchers uh, for the first time at retreat I knew Carmen and I had met with Carmen before who is Broadway Stitcher. But just yesterday we were uh, trying to arrange a time that we can all get together at the library and stitch. So it just reinforced the idea to me that stitchers, even though we are all introverts, are friendly and are kind and we can just all sit in a room and stitch together and that is worthwhile and that is fulfilling and it just it filled my heart I think I said that already but it it was really wonderful to have that fellowship with everybody who was there um, my table was uh, I was kind of assigned to it in a way by Diana uh, I was next to Megan the wide-eyed stitcher on my right, on my left, was Jazzy Stitches. Uh, Leah was there, who I believe is Cross Stitch and Cloves on Instagram. And then Melissa was at our table. Stephanie, uh, Miss Oso Crafty was there. And then Lily uh, was there working on my Guardians piece. And it was like really kind of fun because she was excited to meet me. And she even had me stitch a couple stitches in her project and sign her pattern. And I just 
it was really fun. And then we got, she and I ended up, because she had a car, she took me over to, uh, well, she wanted to go and I tagged along to Needleworkers Delight. And then we had lunch too um, outside the hotel. So it was just, it was really fun because you just would take little moments of your day to get to know people outside of stitching and outside of floss tube because floss tube videos a lot of the times or on Instagram we post our stitching and then so our comments and our conversation is 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 related to that but when you're in person you're spending like significant time face to face you get to talk about things that are not stitching and so it was just really neat to to have that bonding time and to I feel like move in a different direction with some of these friendships that I've developed and make new friendships of course um Stephanie Misoso Crafty and I got to go and we ate at a really delicious Greek restaurant and we had some kebabs and I'm trying to think I yeah I just got to meet so many wonderful people I made it around probably to about half or three quarters of the room uh one day I tried to make a tour and go and see what everyone was stitching on and eventually I just I was a little peopled out the weekend before I was in Germany at a My Little Pony convention and had to meet a lot of new people um I was performing there with the <laughs> with the internet band that I'm a part of um sorry it still makes me giggle a little bit that that's a real thing because it's just so silly but uh <laughs> That weekend before, I was in Germany having to talk to a bunch of new people, and then uh, that week, I was had traveled back from Europe, and so it was already like just jet lagged. And I think by the travel that I had to do to get to New Jersey, even though it wasn't a long time, it ended up being longer than it should have. And by the time I got to the retreat that weekend, I feel like I was still just so as far as my energy went, a little depleted. So I didn't get to talk to everybody, and I regret that. And um, if I go again next year, which I'm hoping I will, I'll try to make a an effort to do better at that and make sure everyone feels included. Um, floss tubers and floss tube appreciators alike. Um, yeah, it was just a really wonderful experience and makes me want to go to more cons uh, cons, uh, retreats, but yeah, we'll, we'll see. We'll see what the year holds. Um, I do want to, even though you've seen it on other people's, I do want to share some of the things that I got at retreat because everyone's bags were a little different and I think it's fun to see all of the different types of things people get. So when we get there, in order to check in, we had to pick up our bag from Arlene. And Arlene has a group of stitchers, I guess, that she met last year at this retreat. And since then, they've been stitching together. And they, the New Jersey stitchers, all helped her get these bags ready for all of us stitchers that were coming in. I think there were a little over a hundred of us, perhaps. And um, there were just all of these goodies inside. First of all, you've seen it before, there was this New Jersey Floss Tube Retreat uh, thermal mug. Pretty cool. I still need to wash mine so I can use it. There um, were two little Notions bags. There's this cute kind of rainbowy one that I got. It has a tiny little uh, measuring tape, a friction highlighter, um, Gary Parr from Fiber Talk was supposed to be there, but he couldn't come, but he gave us all a gift of two rainbow gallery threads, I think. Um, so that was very kind of him. Uh, there was a little skein of Weeks Dye Works in there, and this adorable, which I need to put it on my board back here so I can use it, uh, Floss Tube New Jersey 2009 Retreat. It's a wooden minder with the, uh, logo or with the stuff kind of burned into it which is pretty cool that's a nice needle minder um the other bag that we got uh is pretty amazing like i said there were nearly 100 a little over 100 of us and um arlene made an announcement there was somebody there her name was barbara as part of the new jersey stitchers and she made 
everyone a little notions bag and this is really neat it is uh, has like measuring tape bit parts in it and so it will snap closed again when you're not using it you can bend it and you know how measuring tapes will snap back into into shape yeah it's so cool <laughs> but in here is a little junk journal um, it has all these pages to take notes. There's little sections with little notebooks that you can take out that sh that they made. Um, pretty cool. Counting pins. I like this one because it looks like it has an eyeball on it. A scissor fob that says New Jersey Floss Tube Retreat 2019. And a little uh, Ginger Stork charm on the end, some thread cards, mine have um, some writing on it about love, a little a mound of beeswax here, and yes, that's, that's all, but I shouldn't say that's all, but that's everything. Yeah, it was just really awesome that they spent the time to prepare all of that fun stuff for us. Yeah, just so, I'm so grateful, and it, yes, it was so awesome. Um, the other thing that just, like, went, I wasn't even expecting this, and had I known people did this, maybe I would have tried to put something together, but there were people who made an item to give to everybody. Like I said, there were a little over 100 people there, I'm, I'm pretty sure. Um... Caroline and Off the Grid made everybody one of these little notion bags. So we all, she had a whole box of them. We all got in line and got to pick um, our a fabric that we liked. Like, beautiful. Just like really well made. I'm, I need to put some stuff in that. I need to use it. Um, Kelly Bell made everybody these adorable little art or art ort pouches. And of course they all have bell on it so we can think of her when we use them like how cute and how sweet is that I tried to um I tried to kind of match mine all together <laughs> and uh, there was a woman there named Leah uh, who gave everybody little bendy stitchy buddies and I picked this cowboy and it kind of makes me laugh because the way that his colors were printed on him he has a little bit of of stomach showing, so I call him my crop top cowboy. Um, but I love his mustache. And that was the stuff. Oh, one more thing. Uh, Candace at uh, on Instagram, she's Slub Lover Stitcher. Um, she made everybody these little fobs. Um, I ended up putting mine on my zipper. Um, and they were all different colors of variegated, all stitched on this black linen. It might be even weave, but like, how adorable is that? Let me put it up close. So beautiful. And I picked this color, and I didn't even think about it, but it perfectly matches my Mamaly bag that Emily gave me. So, yeah. Thank you so much, you guys. Like, that was totally unexpected, and now I'm going to have to put something together for next year. Um, and, of course, that pressure is not... A kind of pressure like an unwanted pressure I just I one of my love languages is giving gifts and so I think it would be fun for me to put something together for everybody um, now I'm gonna move on to uh, well this is kind of a gift this was my swaps uh, package that I got um, so if you had been there you would have seen quite a few beautifully wrapped packages on the table in preparation for the swap. And the way that this was run is uh, we all got a raffle ticket. Uh, you know, half was kept with Arlene and half, half of it was given to us and we got to pick our exchange, our present per se, the get, you know, the wrapped package. We got to pick our packages uh, in order of the raff, the tickets that were drawn, the numbers. And I literally told my table, I said, oh, I hope I go somewhere at the end because it's going to be too much pressure looking at all these beautiful packages to pick one. And if 
and everyone's going to be watching and I just, I would prefer to go at the end and that way, you know, the selection will have been lowered and I won't have, there won't be as much pressure. Well, of course, guess who gets picked? The very first name, it was me. And thank goodness McKenna put her bag or her package in this. I saw the cats and I was like, great, I'm picking the cats. Thank you. And I just grabbed that and sat down. <laughs> I was a little flustered, especially just because I had just said I wanted to go last. So I opened this up. I didn't know it was from McKenna until I opened it up and had a note from her. And uh, first off, I'll show her beautiful piece. I'm not sure what this is from, but I'm sure she'll have a video out where she talks about it. But it is this gorgeous little pillow. It's stuffed with... um some kind of like bean or seed. I think they're seeds because this is pretty long. But so it's got a nice bean bag kind of weight to it. And I just love the colors. Yeah, it's beautiful. Thank you, McKenna, um, for that. But also thank you for this. Uh, she gave me this piece of even weave. I'm not sure what it is. At some point I'd like to ask her about some of these things that were in. I got, I think I just got distracted and ran out of time to ask her at um, retreat what some of these are, but uh, I'm gonna give her some time and hopefully ask her. She gave me this skein of Silken Colors by the Thread Gatherer. It's Cherry Wine. A really nice burgundy. She gave me uh, this thread snipper. So it's a ginger and um, it's just some snips. And I got some gentle arts threads in kind of patriotic colors. I got a skein of black crow. Uh, this is cherry wine. This is cherry wine again. And then this is straw bonnet. So those are kind of, well, the black's not patriotic. I have this skein of uh, Weeks Dye Works in as well, navy. So that's why I was saying patriotic colors. Um, and then, I have this skein. It's a Krynic Silk Mori in a blue color. These two threads are both beautiful, but I don't know what they are. So this is what I really would like to ask her about. This one, as you can see, it's gorgeous. It's green and almost like that cherry wine color together. Like stunning. And then this variegated purple as well. And the tags don't have, they have what I assume is a price on it. Or no, a color number maybe. This says 151 and this says 195. So I would like to contact her at some point and ask her about what those are. Because they're really beautiful. Oh, here's another Silken Colors. This is a limited edition. And it's a really pretty tan and peachy and pink color. Yeah, that's actually pretty close. Beautiful. So a bunch of goodies from my, from McKenna. Thank you so much. I am just really glad that you put. I'm really glad that you put cats on it because it saved me from a bunch of social anxiety. <laughs> um. So that was all of my, I guess, like, gifty haul. Um, but of course, as I mentioned, the retreat was in New Jersey, uh, purposely very close to Needle Workers Delight. Oh, I almost forgot. We had a raffle and I won this box, uh, this limited edition box collection of Victorian Motto threads. And I have not used Victorian Motto threads before. So I'm excited to do that. I need to look these up and see if they're readily available or if the colors are limited edition or just the collection is limited edition because um, 
I need to know if I can use them in my designs or not. Another thing that I bought while I was at the retreat is a couple of legal minders. Abby, Top Knot Stitcher, she had her Top Knot pop-up shop available with all of her needle minders. And uh, she had a really great deal with some retreat pricing. And so I got three needle minders. The first one is this, um, feels like glass with a painted backing on it, I suppose. But it's this one with the gorgeous metallics. Just, I think, gold, silver, and copper. It reminded me of a dragon, of course, so I got it. Yeah, see how shiny that is? Beautiful. Um, something that she has at her store is a lot of uh, Disney pin ones, which are pretty adorable. This one is Mushu. Of course, it's a dragon, so I had to get him. He's so cute! And then lastly, this is my favorite one, uh, but it is a raptor skull with the words Clever Girl on it, which is perfect for me. I love Jurassic Park. I love raptors. I had to get it. And this may or may not be a sneak peek at something that's to come. That's all I'll say. But uh, I'm glad that Abby had her store there and I was able to get some stuff to support her. Um, were you excited about that, Danny? <laughs> Apparently she she appreciated it too. Maybe she just wants to say hi to Jam. Where are you going? She just went behind the computer. <laughs> anyway, um, I love those and uh, yeah, happy I was able to, to get them and, and support Abby. Okay, so my goal at Needleworkers Delight, because as I've said, I'm not really looking for new patterns to stitch for fun. I, I uh, have enough already with my 36 whips and my model stitching, etc, etc. Uh, my main goal at Needleworkers Delight is to find some cool things to stitch with uh, because it makes such a big difference when you can see everything in front of you and be able to pick cool colors that'll inspire you or, you know, pick sparkly things, whatever. Um, and to be quite honest, Needleworkers Delight had so much to look at, it just, if you weren't hunting for something specific, it was like, how do I look at everything to know if I want to buy something? So I didn't really buy any new patterns. Actually, I didn't buy any new patterns at all. Mostly I just bought uh, supplies. And... Uh, the main thing I had in mind there was the alternate colors of my needle keeper, my dragon uh, ne uh, needle book that I had made for the exchange and that I'm hoping to restitch and be able to release as an Ingleside Imaginarium pattern. Um, and that was stitched on a hand dyed 40 count, but that because that was all I had when I was stitching it for the exchange. Uh, but it doesn't need to be a hand dyed because there's so little of the actual fabric that's shown. So instead, I was able to find some 40 count linen, some Zweigert linen, because um, Needleworkers Delight and Zweigert, I believe, have a relationship uh, to where they use their fabrics to dyes and then we'll sell them. Um, but I got four colors of 40 count Zweigert uh, Newcastle linen. This one is Silvery Moon, of course, my, um, I'm using my or, uh, Ot Light for lighting as well as my normal lamp and my light, so I think this is going to be too bright, but it's just a beautiful light, 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 pearly gray color. So that's going to be nice. This one is Rue Green, a very light bluish green color. This is stone gray, so a pinky gray color. I would say a brownie pink gray color. And then this one is the brightest of the lot. It's a pale aqua, but it's not that bright. Not that bright. Well, kind of, no, it's not that bright. It's a little paler than that. But the other thing that I got to look at and see in person was, of course, hand-dyed fibers and uh, I just got some that I thought looked pretty. These all are gentle arts threads that fall into that category. This is driftwood, creek bed, <laughs> and bejeweled. I mean, look at that. 
I just love teals, if you can't tell. Um, and then these are possibilities to be used in next year's stitch along. So an orangey yellow I was looking for and a very pale blue teal color or kind of an, yeah, just very pale blue. And then I got some Weeks Dye Works to go for my dragons, my alternate dragon colors. So I'll let your your mind do some wandering and wondering about that. And then I was talking about sparklies and, and boy did I go, I won't hold all of these up individually and talk about like what color they are or anything, but I got all kinds of Krynik to choose from for my new dragon colors. And then if I ever need sparkly threads, I'm going to have some great colors to choose from. So, yeah, it just is so cool to be able to be there and, and look at everything. And to go with sparkly threads, of course you have, oh gosh, they really do sparkle in this light. Um, I was able to pick out all kinds of Mill Hill beads. Um, these are all the Magnifica kind, but I ended up using those on my original needle keeper and I thought that they would stick with those. Oops, I love this one. Check out that color. And of course, teals. Beautiful. And then I got a new pair of scissors because I feel like I can never have enough scissors. And this kind of beautiful coppery color. They call it rose gold, but to me that's more of a copper. Pretty. And then I got a laying tool, um, a wooden one, because I've always been interested to see if that would help me. Um, my stitches look nicer. I'm not the neatest stitcher. I thought, why not? try it. So I believe that finally that is everything that I had to show you and talk to you about. Um, sorry I was away for so long. I'm not going to make any promises about the future, but I do have some exciting things planned as far as future patterns and things, so I will be back eventually. Um, I think for next time uh, two goals will be and my Pokemon will be done and, you know, it, my other goal, and it might not be before next time, but I'm hoping that my Halloween horse will be finished for Halloween. And with that, I, um, oh, I did want to show just some, some other haul very, very quickly because it is from some of my, my um, friends and everyone loves a beautiful project bag. This one is not from a friend. I don't mean to say it like we're not friends, but I don't know her personally. This is from uh, Diddly Daddle Designs. I saw this fox fabric and thought it was just so cute. Look how bright that orange is. And I, yeah, just I love the blues and everything. So it's a striped fabric on top. And this fun bright orange and sparkly fabric on the inside. Yeah, Diddly Daddle Designs. Um, sorry, I had to smell it because it felt a little wet. Oh, I know why it's wet, but Rhaegar spilled some coffee on some of my stuff earlier. So, um, in fact, it was this bag that got the brunt of it. I guess luckily part of it is vinyl, but um, this bag was made by Diana at It Is Kismet Stitches, and I got it as a uh, Part of a sale that she had on Facebook and as soon as I saw the fabric I knew I had to have it. Look at those colors but also this woman who is living my greatest dream. Not really because you shouldn't keep exotic animals as pets but she has a leopard on a leash and I love that. A girl can dream but she should not act upon that dream. <laughs> and then this is a new project bag as well that I have. Um, it is a Mommelie bag. Back when Buster wasn't feeling well, Emily did a couple of sales to help with vet bills and I was uh, so so pleased to be able to contribute and also receive a gorgeous bag in return. Um, and this is one of her 
bags based off of the one that she made for Jessie Marie, so I feel like I have a Jessie Marie bag. But I'm calling it my Buster bag because um, it was for that cause. And I'm so happy Buster's feeling better. <laughs> so I very rarely uh, buy new patterns. That's kind of true. That's kind of true. Um, but I was looking through some of my old fibers, in particularly all the Carrie's Creation threads that I have, trying to figure out a way to use them. Because I had originally bought them to use in patterns, but um, I don't think I'll do that anymore. So I want to still use them because they're gorgeous. And I also have a bunch of color and cotton that uh, need to be used. And I've got those new Victorian motto thread samplers. And I was like, what can I do to incorporate a bunch of colors? And I thought of Emily at Eclectic Possessions. I thought of her Death by Cross Stitch and how gorgeous it was with all of the small chunks and sections and motifs done in different variegated colors. And so I decided I was going to get my own long dog sampler and I got this one. It is the Templar's Prophecy. And of course I had to get the one with the dragons in it. Gorgeous. Dragon, dragon, griffin, knight, lions marching, horse with owl and bird, a rabbit, unicorns, like a little gargoyly guy, dragony guy here on the moon, another dragony guy here, like, yeah, of course, duh. So, someday I'll start that, and I'm hoping to be able to use up some of those gorgeous threads that I have. They're just sitting around right now. And then the other thing that I wanted to share, and um, I'm gonna flash back to HL's Moth by Kathy Barrick right now. When I saw, uh, Kathy's room at retreat there was another pattern there that caught my eye and it was because of this red red horse this is Fiona and Edward by Kathy Barrick um, when I decided I was going to join the stitch along for the moth I wanted to order the silks and I thought oh I'll order that other Kathy Barrick while I'm at it I went to order all of the stuff online and I thought to myself this is gonna be a pretty pricey order I'd I would like to support a friend, somebody I know. So I actually messaged Julie at um, Reflections Framing and Stitching in Nebraska and I had her put together, she put the fabric and the silks together for me for um, the moth and she also had this in stock and was able to put together the silks and the fabric for it as well. Um, and you'll actually be able to see here the way that it came to me like it was wrapped in tissue each bat project had its own little bag the fabric is folded up and around all of the threads that she put together for me and the fabric has this uh little card pinned to it so you can see there it has the project name fabric name or type the fabric name the cut size, the border size, and the price, and then it has, of course, reflections info up there at the top. I opened it and just like, Julie, you go above and beyond, and I wish I was closer because I would be there every weekend to stitch with you. I hope you know. <laughs> um, I'm just, yeah, I'm so grateful. The one thing that she was not able to get for me because she doesn't carry them in store are um, the silken colors for the horse. And I actually looked up the called for and it was not as bright as I had remembered. So I got this one at a, a needlepoint store actually here uh, that's in Manhattan called Annie's. Annie's and Company, I think. And this one, very fittingly for me, is called Dragon's Blood. And I think that's going to be awesome. When am I going to start that? I don't know. <laughs> but I know I have it and it's one of my... I just admire Kathy Barrick's stuff so much. I think she has a very distinctive style, and yeah, everything about it is awesome. Okay, that is officially everything, and if I remember anything, it's too late because I've got to end this video. <laughs> Thank you guys for watching, and thanks for hanging around even though I'm not terribly consistent with my videos. I just, I get, sometimes I have no stitching, 
So I'm like, I don't want to make a video and not have anything to show. Then sometimes I have a lot of stuff going on and I want to wait and make the video until I have this cool thing I'm working on to show. And then I don't get it done until later. And it's just, you know, it's just life. <laughs> But I do appreciate you guys coming back and uh, watching and appreciating and commenting and just the love that, that you guys give me through, you know, my own stitching journey, but also my designing journey. And um, having been to the retreat, it just reiterates how awesome Flossy, or Flosstube and uh, Stitchy people are. So um, with that, I'm going to say see you next time and bye.